Hey guys and welcome to my favorite day crafts. So this video today is going to be the first part for my tutorial on how I do this 6x8 folio. And if you haven't watched it yet, I have already posted a walkthrough for this folio to my YouTube channel in a separate video. So because a lot of you asked for it, I decided to do this tutorial and post it to my YouTube channel for free for all of you to watch. But I also designed this PDF cutting guide which goes along with the video tutorial and it's now available in my Etsy store for you to purchase. So of course throughout this video tutorial I will make sure that I will always let you know the measurements for the pieces I'm going to cut and use to make this folio. But I would definitely recommend to also get the cutting guide as I think it's much easier to work with a cutting guide and a video tutorial together. And as you can see, I really put a lot of work into designing my cutting guide. So not only will you find all the measurements for each element you would need to build this folio, but also images um, which show you exactly where to place each element. And then on the bottom, there is a QR code which leads you directly to the coordinating YouTube video tutorial. And then along with the cutting guide, you are also getting the templates on each of these elements. And these are full size templates and they show you exactly where to score your cardstock or where to cut your cardstock. So I would just print out the cutting guides and the templates and keep them in a folder. And then every time you want to do this folio, you could just um, get it out and know exactly all the measurements you would need. And then if you're not sure on how to do a step, you can refer back to this video. And for this folio, I decided to divide my cutting guides as well as my video tutorials into two parts. So there is one tutorial and one cutting guide on how to make the cover of this folio. And then in the second part, I will show you how to do the inside. So now let's just start with the first part on this tutorial. So first we want to cut our pattern paper, chipboard and cardstock. And the first two pieces we need to cut are our chipboard elements A in size 6.5 by 8.5 of an inch. And these pieces are going to be our front and back cover. And then we also need a chipboard piece B in size 1 and 1 quarter of an inch by 8.5 of an inch. And this is going to be the piece for the spine of our cover. And after cutting my chipboard pieces, I like to get a pencil and just label them. So you see me writing the letter A on my chipboard pieces A and then the letter B on the chipboard piece B. And then we also need to cut our cardstock and I actually like to use heavyweight cardstock in size A3. And for the first cardstock element we need to cut, which is cardstock element C in size 10 inches by 16 and 1 quarter of an inch, you would actually need to have cardstock in a larger size like A3 size. If you don't have cardstock in this large size, um, you could of course also cut two smaller pieces and just attach them to each other. And because my paper trimmer isn't large enough, I didn't cut the 16 and 1 quarter of an inch side yet. So um, you can just leave your A3 cardstock as it is. And then later, after you have prepared your album cover, you can just cut off the excess. And then we also need to cut the cardstock elements for making the tag pocket and the tag which we want to place um, on the back cover and here we need cardstock element D in size 3 and 1 quarter of an inch by 5 and 1 quarter of an inch and then we also need cardstock element E in size 4 and 7 eighths of an inch by 4 and 3 eighths of an inch. 
And now that we have cut all our chippered and cardstock elements, we would need to do the cover. We can also um, cut the pattern paper to decorate our front and back cover from the outside. So we need two pattern paper elements in size 6 and 1 quarter of an inch by 8 and 1 quarter of an inch. So for my front cover I chose this cute floral pattern and um, yeah so just make sure that you cut it the right way so you want it in the right orientation. And then I also decided on what I want to be on the back cover which is this pattern paper with all the animals and leaves and florals as well. So I also cut this at six and a quarter by eight and a quarter. Now that we have cut both our pattern papers A, we also want to cut our pattern paper to decorate our spine. So we need pattern paper B in size one inches by eight and one quarter of an inch. So as you can see for the spine, I decided to use this wood pattern paper. Now for the next step, we only need our chippered elements as well as our cardstock element C. And what we want to do now is we lay down our cardstock element C onto our table so that the longer side is on the bottom and the shorter sides are on the left and right. And then you see me using this L-shaped ruler, which is actually um, part of a tool set I got at Craftelier. This is an online store here in Europe. And this tool set is especially designed for making mini albums or making album covers. So I'm going to use this ruler as a guide so that I know exactly where to um, glue my chippered pieces. But as you can see, it measures three quarters of an inch. So if you don't have um, this type of ruler, you could of course also take a simple ruler and just measure three quarters of an inch from all four sides, get a pencil and just mark it down. But I have to say that I really love working with this tool set. So if you're doing a lot of mini albums and folios, I can definitely highly recommend to get one. Okay, so now we want to attach the first of our two chippered elements A. And for this, I like using wet glue instead of tape. So you see me just placing a lot of glue on the back side. And the reason why I prefer wet glue is that I'm still able to move around my chippered piece and um, yeah, also move around my L-shaped ruler so that it's like the even border of three quarters of an inch around my chippered elements. So as you can see, I place my chippered element down and I actually press it against the ruler and then I take my ruler and I make sure that there is an even border of three quarters of an inch on each side. And then I take the second tool from the ruler set, which is this T-shaped tool. And this actually measures like almost one quarter of an inch. It's not one eighth of an inch. It's not one quarter of an inch either. And this is because um, this tool set is made for Europe and is actually using centimeters instead of inches. But what you want to have now is you want to make sure that there is a little bit of space between chippered element A and chippered element B, which we are going to place next. But again, if you don't have this tool set, you're totally fine. You could just use your pencil and your ruler again, and then you mark um, the space of one quarter of an inch between chippered element A and chippered element B. And then just make sure to attach your chippered element B right at that pe pencil um, line and leave the space in between those elements. 
After attaching chipboard element B, which is going to be for our spine, um, I get my third tool from the tool set and um, this is again a space holder and I actually um, replace the T-shaped tool for this space holder and then I place my T-shaped tool um, on the right side next to chipboard element B so that I can now um, place the last chipboard element which is chipboard element A. So now that I have placed um, all my chippered elements onto cardstock element C, I can use my ruler again and then I get a pencil and I mark it down. So that's where I can now go ahead and use my cutting tool to cut off the excess of the cardstock. Now that I have attached all three chippered elements, I get my large bone folder and I just burnish it down so that it sticks very well to the cardstock. So I remove my tools, burnish it down and then I also like to turn it around and burnish from the other side, from the outside of the cover. And now for wrapping our album cover, I like to use my 5 8 of an inch wide score tape. And I would definitely recommend to use a very strong tape here. So I can definitely recommend this score tape. Um, and what I also like about it, um, it's very easy to rip off. So I just use a metal ruler here to rip it off right at the edges of my cardstock. So just go ahead and place your tape around the chipboard elements and you want to make sure that you place it all the way to the edge. And now we need to cut off the corners and again I use another tool from the tool set and this is perfect to have the perfect angle um, for cutting off the corners. But again, you could also just take your scissors and it actually doesn't have to be so perfect. So just take your scissors and cut at an angle. But what you want to make sure is you want to have a little bit of space between the corner of your chipboard elements and where you cut off the cardstock. So um, just make sure that there's a little bit of space and then take your scissors and just cut at an angle and it's totally fine even if it's not the perfect angle. But with this tool I just go ahead and I use my pencil to mark down the line um, on all four corners and then I get my large scissors and I just cut them off. And then to wrap my cover, I like to start with the longer sides first. And what I do is before removing the tape backing, I get my bone folder and I just pre-fold my cardstock up. So I use my fingers, I fold it upwards and then I take my bone folder and I just burnish around the edges of my chipboard. And then we can remove the tape backing from the first side and I like to actually attach the middle first. So I use my thumbs and I fold up the um, edge on the middle chipboard piece, so on our chipboard element B. And I press it down in the middle and then I get my large bone folder to burnish it down to the sides. And then I can go ahead and turn around my construction and also fold up the cardstock on the opposite side. And now of course we can also wrap our album cover on the shorter sides. But before I do so I remove the tape backing and I get my large bone folder again. And what you see me doing here is I use my large bone folder to um, fold the corners inwards and this actually leaves me with um, perfect clean corners um, on my album cover. So just try to um, fold them inside a little bit and have them stick to the tape. So that's also why I said before that you want to place your tape all the way to the edges. So stick it down just 
move it inside and then you can go ahead and pre-fold your cardstock before you fold it up and stick it down onto your chipboard element. And then of course we do exactly the same for the last side. Now the base for our album cover is done so we can continue by um, decorating the outside and also attaching our ribbon closure. So now you can choose which side you prefer to be your front and which side you prefer to be your back cover. So sometimes when I didn't do a good job with um, wrapping the corners and there's one corner which doesn't look so good, I prefer to have it on the back cover rather than um, on the front cover. And then we need our pattern papers A and for attaching my pattern paper to the album cover I like to use um, score tape again but you could of course also use red glue for this but I prefer score tape and I actually just place it around the edges of my pattern paper A and then I also place one strip in the middle of my pattern paper and then I get my bone folder and burnish it down so that the tape sticks very well to my pattern paper and it's easier to remove the tape backing. And then I go ahead and I just remove the whole tape backing. And then to attach my pattern paper I like to hold it over my album cover without placing it down yet. And then I just eyeball it and I want to make sure that there is an even border around. So with these measurements you would have a border of 1 8 of an inch around your pattern paper. But um, as I said I just eyeball it and once I think I found the right position I go ahead and I just place it down and stick it to the album cover. And again, after attaching it, get your bone folder and make sure that you burnish it down. After attaching our pattern paper onto our front cover, we of course need to turn around our album cover and then we can attach our pattern paper for the back cover as well. And again, I just place some tape on the back side and um, just make sure that you don't have it upside down when you attach it. So again just um, after placing all your tape you can go ahead and remove the tape backing and then try to um, place it as perfect as you can do but um, if you don't feel confident with using your tape on the album cover um, using wet glue, strong wet glue would definitely work as well. Okay, so now we only need to attach um, our pattern paper to the spine. So get your pattern paper B and again um, use some tape or wet glue if you prefer wet glue and then just attach it to your spine. Now that we have um, our pattern paper attached to our album cover, we can continue by adding our ribbon closure with our right eyelids. So for this I use my Tim Holt ruler. This is just great to um, find the middle. So I use it to find the middle um, for where I want to place my eyelids. So I use a pencil and I mark it down. And of course I do this on both sides, so on the front and the back cover and I just mark it right um, where um, I can see my cardstock wrapping. And then we need our eyelid setting tool or a hole punch first to um, punch the holes where we want to place the eyelids. And I use the Rear Memory Keepers Crop a Dial for this and I actually um, need the larger holes because my eyelids would fit in the larger holes. Then after punching the holes you can get your right eyelids and just place them into the holes. 
Use your eyelid setting tool, make sure that it's in the right settings and then you can go ahead and just attach them um, to your album cover. Now that we have set both of our eyelids, we can go ahead and attach our ribbon. So um, I use this pink, very white ribbon. So you could definitely use ribbon, which is not as white, um, but I chose this one. And then you want to pull it through the eyelid from the outside. And after pulling it through, I use my tape again to attach the ribbon to the album cover on the inside. So I just rub off a piece of my tape and I place it right next to the eyelid and then I just stick down my ribbon onto it. And because you definitely don't want your ribbon to rip off your folio once you have finished it, um, I like to get another piece of tape and I just place it um, onto the ribbon as well as um, on top of the um, eyelid because also an eyelid can be very sharp so this prevents your cardstock from um, ripping from the um, sharp eyelid as well. So as you could see, I didn't cut my ribbon before attaching it to the album cover. So I now need to cut it off at the right length. And for me personally, I like to have the ribbon um, at the length of almost or around um, 12 inches. And now that we have um, our ribbon attached to the front cover, we of course do exactly the same for the back cover. So I get another piece of ribbon um, at the same length and I just pull it through the eyelid from the outside of the album cover. And then I use my tape to attach it on the inside and I also use tape to cover up the um, eyelid and the tape on the top. And then I also like to get a lighter to um, burn the ends of my ribbon so this prevents them from ripping apart. Now the last thing we want to add to our album cover is the tag pocket on the back cover. So we have already cut our cardstock elements D and E which are going to be the tag and the tag pocket. But uh, for cardstock element E, we also need to score the cardstock. So there is no scoring for D, but for E we have to score at half of an inch from the left side. So we start with the longest side, which is 4 and 7 eighths of an inch long. And then we score at half of an inch. Then we have to turn around our cardstock and we also want to score at half of an inch and then add three and seven eighths of an inch. Then we need to attach tape right next to the scoring lines and I actually like to use three eighths of an inch score tape for this. And after attaching our tape, we want to cut off the corners of the little flaps we created with scoring. So for this, I like to turn around my cardstock and then I get my small scissors and I just cut at an angle right next to the scoring lines. And just make sure that you don't accidentally cut into the scoring lines, but just next to them. Once you have cut off the corners, you can go ahead and um, actually fold up the little flaps we created. And for this, turn around your cardstock because you don't want to fold it up on the side where you scored it or where you placed the tape on. Um, so we want to fold it on the back side and then I also like to get my bone folder and burnish it down. And then to make my tag I like to use a template. So this one is also included in the cutting guide. So if you're getting the cutting guide you will have this template as well. And what I did here is I actually backed it onto some chipper so that I can use it over and over again. And now I just need to place it onto my cardstock and then with a pencil I can mark where I want to cut off the corners and also where the hole would need to be um, for placing the ribbon. 
So after using the template I just get my crocodile and then I punch the hole right in the middle and then I get my large scissors and I just cut off the corners. Now before I add ribbon to the tag I get a piece of pattern paper which is matching the back cover so I got this green one and then I turn it around and I use my 5 8 of an inch tape and I just place it on this pattern paper piece on the back side and what I do then is I use my crocodile and I just punch a hole in the middle of the tape somewhere and then I leave a little bit of space in between and I punch another hole and now I use a circle punch it is a half of an inch circle and then I just place it around the hole I just punched with my crocodile and then I have these um, circles which I can place around the hole on my tag and they are already self-adhesive so that's why I love to um, add my tape first. So now you're able to just remove the tape backing and then you can stick it around the hole on your tags on both sides. Now we just need a piece of ribbon which is again matching the collection or matching the back cover and what you want to do is you cut off a piece of ribbon and then you fold it in the middle and where you fold it you can pull it through the uh, hole on your tag and once you have pulled it through you can then get the ends of the ribbon and pull it through the loop you created and then um, just pull on each end to um, have it very tightly attached to your tag. And then you can get your scissors and just cut your ends of the ribbon um, at an angle so that they look nice. And um, what I like to do then is I use a lighter to burn off the ends because I don't want them to rip apart. So now that our tag is prepared as well, we can take our pocket and um, what I like to do is I just remove the tape backing from the bottom of the pocket but just at one side and then um, I hold up the sticky side and I use the non-sticky side to align it to um, my back cover so I make sure that I have it where I want it to be and once I've found the right position I can go ahead and just remove the rest of the tape backing and press it down. And then to decorate my tag pocket I just want to use this 3x4 um, journaling card. So um, I just get my red glue again and I place some glue on the back side and then I can attach my 3x4 journaling card onto my pocket. So now we're basically done with the album cover so the last step of course would be to just get the tag and place it inside the pocket as well. So that's it for the tutorial on how to do the cover for this 6x8 folio and I really hope that you enjoyed watching it and that you could follow along so if you did so I would love to get your feedback in the comments down below and then also I would love to get your thumbs up if you enjoyed it and then I see you in my next video. Bye!